Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cordem and we're gonna continue our playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. We are in the Elf Song Tavern. We have people to talk to, stuff to explore, but before we get into that, we leveled up to level 11, with the exception of Shadowheart. So we're gonna be looking at the level ups right now. Uh, they are not very complicated. We get some extra HP on our Warlock, we get an additional Warlock spell, lo a spell slot, finally. We gain two different spells and can also replace a spell. One of the spells comes from Mystic Arcanum. Select one of your level 6 spells. Once per long rest you can cast that spell without expending a spell slot. Which is interesting but at the same time it's only per long rest. And our choices are Circle of Death, which seems... Kind of underwhelming, to be honest. It deals 8d6 necrotic damage. So you target a creature, and then everybody around that creature will take this damage. So it's basically a fireball, although I think it has a larger radius and it deals necrotic damage. Not sure if it's very interesting. Arcane Gate, create two link teleportation portals. Could be interesting, not gonna be my choice. We have Eye Bite. Your eyes become black corridors walled in teeth, with your gaze capable of inflicting dread, sickness, or putting creatures to sleep. So, while concentrating, you may cast Eye Bite without expending a spell slot. Lasts for 100 turns. Why this says 1 to 2 damage? I have no idea. <laughs> um, we have Flash to Stone, which is kinda cool. Uh, but it's a little bit strange, because in the originals, when you cast Flesh to Stone, if the target fails its save, it gets turned into stone. But here, it's not the case. In here, you atrophy a foe, restraining them until they temporarily turn to stone. So restraining just basically means that they cannot move. And they begin to petrify over the course of three turns. Attack rolls against the target have advantage, while the entity attack rolls and necessary saving throws have disadvantage. And then, after three turns, if it does not succeed in a saving throw, it gets petrified. It gets turned to stone, can't move or take actions, bonus actions or reactions. Over three turns, I think I would just kill someone instead of turning them into stone. Um, you also have to concentrate on the spell, which feels a little bit weak, but yeah. Create Undead, raise a corpse as an anus mummy that fights by your side. So, I'm not really using my raise dead spells, I don't, I'm not gonna bother with this one. To be honest, it seems that the higher level spells seem more and more underwhelming. And I think there may be some value to Flesh to Stone because restraining is not bad. Because you make it so that someone cannot move and attack rolls against it have advantage. So, pretty good. Um, but over three turns, concentration, eh, I think I'm gonna try out Eye Bite. I'm not sure how good this is, but the fact that if you cast this once, then you can just concentrate on it and keep casting and casting and casting again. I like the idea. As for spells, this is where I got very, very disappointed. Because I thought at level 11, we would get also access to some level 6 spells. But apparently we get access to absolutely zero level 6 spells here. Maybe at level 12? I don't know. <laughs> so the choices here are a little bit... Um, underwhelming maybe? I don't really need any of these things. So I guess what I'm going to be taking here, quite honestly, is just hold person. I, I've wanted to have this spell for some time. We have Old Monster, which is usually better, but if we are facing a group of humanoid enemies, since everything the Warlock casts is upcast, this can actually end up being quite good. So I'll take this one. And replacing, I don't really want to replace anything. I like the spells I have, I'm gonna keep with them. So just accept. We also need to do something here, which is something like this. This can actually go away because I'm not using it. It's an illithid based skill. Thank you. And we can just do like this. So now we can see everything. 
Uh, this is control, this can go over here, this can go here. Like this. We're gonna go for Lazy L's level up. This one is extremely easy. Moving up to level 11 means more hit points and you can now make two additional attacks after attacking with your main hand weapon. This is awesome. Level up done. Moving on to Mr. Gale. On this one we have some more choices, which makes it a little bit more interesting. HP increase, level 6 spell slots, and we get two spells to choose. Now, the level 6 spells, we've already seen Arcane Gate. We have Chain Lightning, strike an enemy with lightning, three more bolts will leap from the target, electrifying as many as three other enemies within 18 meters. Deck save to take half damage. But I think it's still a very cool spell because it's party friendly. I hope, yeah, three other enemies. Circle of Death, same thing as Will. Create and Death, same thing as Will. Disintegrate. This spell is cool because it deals 10d6 plus 40 force damage, which is quite interesting. Um, but the problem here that I'm thinking is you shoot a thin green ray from your finger. If the if the damage it deals reduces the target to zero hit points, it disintegrates into a crumbly ash. So I guess my first question is, does this also destroy loot? Because if it destroys loot, I don't want this spell. If it doesn't, it could be interesting. What is the other big problem about the spell? If somebody, if somebody saves, I'm guessing they take zero damage because it doesn't say here that if they, st they save, they still take half. I think they just take zero. Which is very, very underwhelming. We have Eye Bite, we have Flesh to Stone, we have Globe of Invulnerability, which sounds interesting, although I'm never really seeing myself using this. Create a barrier that makes creatures and objects inside it immune to all damage for three turns. Otilux Freezing Sphere. You create a ball of churning ice that can be launched instantly to generate a frosty explosion or stored for later use. Now, something important to note about this storage for later use, because I did test this out, this isn't like a contingency in the originals. It's not like a sequencer that you save. When you cast this, you can immediately throw it or you can keep with you for 10 turns, but 10 turns only. During those 10 turns, you can shoot it but if that time passes, it gets lost. So, a little bit underwhelming as well. Otto's Irresistible Dance. Cause a creature to start dancing, making it unable to take actions or move. Its attackers have advantage on attack rolls. The dancer has disadvantage on attack rolls and exit saving throws. <clears throat> this is another disabling spell. It's like a Tasha's Hideous Laughter, after all. Not very interesting. Sunbeam, a beam of brilliant light, sears and blinds all creatures in its path. Until the spell ends, you can recast Sunbeam without expending a spell slot. This one I like, because it is a consistent source of damage over 10 turns. You can just keep on casting this. And the fact that it's radiant damage and it also blinds creatures makes it an interesting spell. I'm actually thinking about taking this one. And finally, we have Wall of Ice. This one raises a wall of solid ice that deals 10 to 60 cold damage to anyone standing in its way. And when the ice is broken, it leaves behind a cloud of frigid air that deals 10 to 60 cold damage per turn to creatures within. It doesn't say for how long the wall stays up. I'm not sure if it's like 10 turns, if it's just one turn. I don't know. Uh, what I will be taking, I'm going to be taking Chain Lightning because I think I will like this spell a lot. And I'm kind of undecided between Sunbeam or a Wall of Ice. Because the Wall of Ice has also the other advantage of blocking off a pathway for enemies. Although at the same time, this is consistent damage in a blind. It's, it's not really a very easy choice for me. I think I'm going to take the Wall just because of the potential utility. And I'm going to try and find somebody selling this scroll. And a bunch of others as well. To test them out. Preparing spells, this goes away. I take Chain Lightning. And I suppose that if I want to make room for the wall, I could take out the Ice Storm. 
But then I have two level six spells. I can only cast one. Not an easy choice. Okay, I think I'll take off this one and just bring... Uh, this one all the same. And then I'll decide. Shadow Heart. We're gonna wait until she levels up, but I, I expect it to be a, an easy level up. Of the people. Okay. So, carrying on. We can speak with the bartender. We haven't spoken to him yet. Welcome back. What can I do you for? Um. Wait, what? Have I spoken to this guy yet? Going to make this place famous, I reckon. Victim is a bloody duke. Oh, yes, the we Lynn did. Stelman. Well, she was a duke. Now she's just bloody. Okay, yeah, right, right, right. right. Double for that room once the constable's done with it. Murders and ghosts are always grand, grand at least. I hope. I hope. Okay, never mind. I thought I hadn't spoken to this guy yet. Real okay. We're gonna check out the kitchen. Actually, give me a second, please. And I'm back. So I'm gonna start by talking with the kitties, tambourine. Hello, servant tape. Hmm. Would you kill those rats, please? Their presence vexes me. The rats. I imagine rats in a cellar. Oh, look, tambourine. A servant comes to help us. Oh, kill those rats, would you? When they're dead, the other servants will feed us. Okay. Rovia burned the bullier base again. And now I have to scrub the pot. <laughs> Some chef he is. <laughs> okay. Do I know this name? Is this guy in the list of assassins? No, wait, not this one. Not this one. Um, yeah, so she was killed in the Elf Song Tavern. We know, we know. I haven't seen this one yet. Frank, Pertree, Cora, Figaro. We have to talk to this guy. Chef Rovier. Yeah, Chef Rovier. Okay. I thought as much. Damn rats. Oi, you. I thought I asked you to clean the rats out of this cellar yesterday already. Hop to it. Get in there. Uh, first of all, why does he have a battle axe on his back if he's a chef? But... Was he in Baldur's Gate 1? Because in Baldur's Gate 1 there is a quest right at the start in Candlekeep to kill rats in a cellar. Maybe this is a reference? The rats are unimportant. Your name is on a list of murder targets. You need to hide. No. I need them rats taken care of. Here's the deal. I'll keep a lookout for murderers. You murder the rats. What does he say if I go for... Haven't I done this before? I can see in your eyes. You want to warn okay. me killers again. No. The only murder I want to hear of is rat murder. Be gone. Okay. The cellars are just oh. upstairs. There you'll find my old lodgings. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's a lot of rats. Jesus. Plus 17. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, there is fire wine or alcohol on the floor, so I can just set this all on fire. I'm not sure if the owner would be very happy that I set things on fire, though. Okay, oh, this group is acting before Shadowheart. I think I can do the same thing I did before, which is just using Shadowheart with um, Guardian Spirits to kill all of them. Okay, let me see if I can clear out these guys here. Don't 
without having to blow everything up. Okay. Rough tempest I will raise. Uh, ooh, chain lightning. <laughs> um, I could go for magic missile, but I'm not gonna spend the spell on this. Let's just use a ray of frost. Okay, he's dead. And it's kind of perfect because now we have three attacks per turn. And we have three enemies. Okay. Nice. No, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. No, no. I pressed space to try and, and pause the turn as if I were playing in real time with pause. Did not work out as you just saw. Uh, yeah, let's just do this. This is like the most efficient way to deal with these little enemies. Okay, come at me. They're not very bright, are they? One lived! Okay. A the mechanism to open huh? is somewhere among the blind racks. Okay. Keepsake ring, dominate beast. Make a beast fight alongside you. Every time the beast takes damage, it makes a wisdom saving throw against your domination. Okay. Speaking of rings, don't you have. Yeah, I have to swap this ring. Okay, thank you. A hero at heart. So I'm guessing we may need some kind of perception check to find this hidden this hidden door. I'll take this way. So we're gonna use Shadow Heart here. Okay. Oops. No, nothing over here. Better take a look. On the other side you'll find a passageway. Known only to those invited to do business. Okay. Oh, there's a button. Ah, okay, so it's the button. I could find it even if I didn't have the... Um, the perception thing. Alright. Do I bother myself with this? I mean, I guess if it's like a bunch of them at a the time... I can just do it. Eh, enough. One move ahead. I want to find some action, honestly. I, there's a lot of dialogue here, a lot of people to talk to. I would like a fight that's a little bit more involved than fighting rats. <laughs> ah, right. This this thingy opens very here. Very good. Okay. A button. Been awakened. Rakit's forces are near. Oh. Okay. Get the Yankee. Blackith has found us. Get rid of them quickly. Blackith has found us. In the meantime, tear every brick out if you have. I don't think they are marked as enemies. Can't afford to stay idle. Let's do the usual thing here. These are starting to wake. I'm gonna leave you two back. And Blazel comes with me. Okay, we can unstealth. And let's see what they have to say. Yeah, these are not enemies yet. Blazel, glad you could join us. The Kithraki have spread word of that artifact that you carry. Tell me, Blazel of Kalir. What reward do you think the Astral Prism will fetch once I pluck it from your corpse and present it to Vlakith? What honors, what riches will the Undying Queen grant me when I hand her the failed prince? This artifact contains the key to our freedom. It is not for the Lich Queen to take. Hmm. I know exactly what the prism contains. 
The traitor prince who would hand us to Gake. The false heir's head will make a fine trophy for Vlakith. As for you, I will leave nothing behind but meat and shattered bone. <laughs> okay, lady. Orpheus is the Githyanki's true prince. You will not take him. Damnable whelp. For a thousand years I have given my life to Vlakith. I will deliver to her the prince of the comet. She shall exalt me. The Gish will record my great deed in Slate. Chamar Zala Vlakith! Okay, there is no chance for persuasion. So what do we have? We have Kry Arak, Paladin of Vlakith. This guy has legendary resistance, which I'm still not sure if it's bugged or not, because it says your next saving throw, but it doesn't go away. Order of Conquest. Frightened enemies within 3 meters take 5 psychic damage per turn. Okay. 18 AC. Flying Strike. When a Githyanki casts Fly, their next melee weapon attack deals an additional 1d4 psychic damage. Why doesn't my Lazel have that? Psionic Empowerment. Your attacks deal an additional 1d6 psychic. Okay. And Supreme Parry. Okay. So he's tough. This one only has 31 hit points. Gate Master Zilak, 13 AC, Mage Armor, Astral Conduit, Psionic Ward. Okay. Astral Conduit, the affected entity cannot move, take actions, bonus actions, or reactions while holding open the Astral Rift. Open a terminal to itself, allowing allies to enter this plane from the Astral Sea. While holding open the rift, the caster can... Okay, okay, okay. But they can summon an ally every other turn. <clears throat> okay, so these would be my primary targets. This one is just a normal archer. This one has 110 HP. He has a long sword. These guys can be kind of... Powerful. And over here, I have kind of the same thing. Okay. So I feel like, with Gale, I'm gonna try and take out these, these Gate Masters. I could mess around with a, a Cloud Kill to test it out. Do I have to move? No, I don't have to move to cast this. Are they resistant to poison? They are not. Okay. This can just straight up kill the guy, but it has to roll high. Can I also hit the one on the left? Oh, come on. If I cast it here, I hit him. Okay. The one thing I want to consider is, does this create... It heavily obscures everything within it. Okay, so I don't want to start with him. On the because I want to be able to see my enemies before I do something like that. Can I shoot this guy? Target is too far, and even if I'm... I mean, if I click heals, I can probably shoot him. From over here, perhaps? Okay, let me, let me click heals and see. Hopefully from this place I can reach the guy. Oh, come on, too far. What about here? Oh, oh! I can hit that one. God damn it. Okay. Thinking. Legendary resistance means casting something like Eye Bite would not be a very good choice. I have Hold Person. I can hit four targets, but they are not in range, which sucks. Okay, I think I'll just try to damage this one, or try to damage this one. I'll try to damage this one. I have a better chance to hit. Yeah. So just blam, blam, blam. 
Okay. I will back up a bit. And... Now I'm gonna play with Gale. And see what I can do on these people. So this would work. And it does not reveal me, correct? It does not reveal me. Okay. That was very pitiful damage, dude. And this guy took no damage. Okay, the, the game deceived me. <laughs> as, as is kind of usual at this point. Cloak and dagger. My and what are you doing? Need to press onward. I think I'm actually just going to go for a flame strike on these two. Try and kill this one. Can I do it from here? Uh, uh, I can. Do I have to move? It seems like I have to move. Okay, what if we do this? Move first and then cast. Okay, this works. Okay, one portal closed. Awesome. That's what I wanted. No holding back. Will, you can pass your turn. Oil of diminution. Gaping wounds. Okay, Lazel. What are we doing? Uh, this guy is stuck in the cloud kill, but Gale is gonna play. I mean, Gale has spent his action, right? I think so. Um, I believe I'm simply gonna take Lazel over here to start occupying this guy before he goes for my other people. Okay, so jumping doesn't work, I imagine. Yeah, jumping is too far away. I will quite simply use a misty step here. Yep. Do I have executioner? I have. <laughs> I think I'll just kill this guy right, right now. Yeah, I think I will. I think I will. Okay. I'm gonna crit with this to make it so we have advantage. Okay. He parried. But now we have advantage on him. Uh, do I wanna make him bleed? It's, there's no real point in doing that. I will try to... Okay, this, this is on every saving throw, so it doesn't even matter. I'll just go for damage then. Action Surge. Good job. Let's go for elusive footwork so he doesn't hit Blazel or he has this advantage. Okay, in your turn. God damn it, bitch. I'm frightened, that's okay. Hold person on Lazel. That's bad. Yeah, let's counter it. Don't want that. It's fine. Astral step is fine. I have used my action casting my cloud kill over there. I think I will just go over here. Actually, I'm fine over here. This guy is going to be annoying, though. He may bring in some reinforcements. Oh, well. If he does, he does. Hold person on Gale. If he holds person, that's always bad. Counter. 21 Arcane Ward. Awesome. Oh, buddy. Wait, did I break his concentration? Ah, no, but it's, it's, it's every other turn. I guess that's why that happened. I'm going to put Blade Ward on Lazel. Okay. 
We did not heal her to full, which is important because she has, before we forget, she has this helmet, which means she has... Uh, deals an additional two necrotic damage, as long as you don't have full health. Okay, and you can stay... Let's finish this. Where you are. Or you can... Yeah, you can stay here. Okay. Okay, well... What are we doing? I can push this guy into the... The, um, the moon thingies. This is obscured and too far. Okay, I think I'll just push this guy into the thingy. Let me see. If I toss him like this, it should work. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay. And you can end your turn. What you doing? Bitch. Super bitch. But it doesn't hurt too much. Okay. So, we are frightened. We are conquered. If frightened... Ah, oh, yeah, right, right. Because we're close to this guy. But now we have this advantage, which sucks. I wonder if I can push him... Oh, no. I'm frightened. That's right. Okay, I'm frightened. I'm frightened. I think I'll heal to get the poisons thingy. Oh no, never mind. I swapped that helmet. I swapped it. Maybe a fainting attack? Yeah. Parried. Okay. It's fine. Just hit him again. He's gonna save against this, but it deals extra damage regardless. So... God damn it. He still took a bunch of damage. Concentration broken on Wrathful Smite. Let's get another evasive footwork. Ooh, mistake. Oh, you bitch. Okay. That's fine, actually. I can put the Cloud Kill on top of these again to just kind of make them stay stuck and even kill them. Wait, why can't you... What's wrong with Gale? Oh, this... Okay, to reposition I only have 9 meters. But if I walk over here it, it works, right? Yeah, this works. I will do it. My turn. Okay. Back up a bit. Who's playing? Those guys. Okay. Oh no, this guy. Counter it. How can he see me? Um, counter. <laughs> Don't get blinded. I thought people would get blinded inside. Clearly not the... What the hell was that? It was very silly. I can guarantee a kill here. Using Spirit Guardians. And I think I will. There's no real reason not to just kill him. Yep, suck it. We're no longer frightened. Let's go over here to also hurt this guy. What the hell? She was going for the... T <laughs> Burn, bitch. Blech. Okay, that guy melted. Now... This guy is still having fun over here. And this guy's kind of screwed. Um, I'm gonna rest after this anyway. So let's play with some new spells here. We have Eye Bite. 
You don't have any particularly special resistances. Yeah, okay. So I bite. Panic does fear, which means... Can take additional actions, blah, blah, blah. Sleep or sickened. Let's try and sleep him. Awesome. I like that very much. Which means that now I can guarantee a crit, I think. Sup, friend. Uh -huh. <laughs> Down he goes. You can just stay over there. And I'm gonna stick with the cloud kills because I'm having fun. But the damage is quite pitiful. Is it just a low roll? Yeah, it's just a very low roll. But how can you roll 10 on a 5d8? That means it's like... <laughs> it's so poor. And he failed his saving throw, so he took full damage. Jesus Christ. Okay. Black is relentless. You handled it well. Let us hope she exhausts her forces soon. Okay. This wasn't even remotely difficult. Now search the room. There's a statue that conceals the way through. I'll reveal it to you. Okay. So before we do that, I am going to quick save. And we're going to look over the level up for um, Shadowheart. I don't expect it to be very complicated. So it should be kind of quick. Yeah, okay, it is quick. We get HP increase, a level 6 spell slot, and what do we have here? We have a blade barrier. Oops. Summon a wall of razor sharp blades that turns the area into difficult terrain and damages anyone foolish enough to come close. 6d10 slashing. Okay. Create undead, whatever. Harm, this is cool. Reduce a target's maximum hit points, but never below 1. It deals 14d6 necrotic. On a save, the target still takes half damage, but its maximum hit points are not reduced. Uh, oh wait, this is ranged? Harm was melee before. Oh, okay. Heal. Heal a target's wounds and remove blindness and any diseases. Very cool. Hero's Feast. You and everyone around can't be poisoned, diseased or frightened. Your HP increases and, make, and you make wisdom saves with advantage. Until long rest. God damn. Or we can have a planner ally. This is very nice. And this is very nice. I think I will take exactly this. Yep. I want to see how this works. Can't afford is it... to stay idle. By the way, did the portrait change or is it just me? Maybe I'm crazy. Whatever. Um, let's do this. And how does this work? I just cast it. Thoroughly stuffed. I am immune to disease, poison, being frightened, make all wisdom saving throws advantage, and I get an additional 12 hit points to maximum HP. And this is very awesome, man. And we also have feast supplies? Count me in. Silver key. Inroads by arms dealer Gortash. Do I have a, a short press? I do. Freshened up and ready to fight. Nine fingers. Here follows a report on the inroads upstart smuggler Enver Gortash has been making on the illicit arms trade in the Kiontar Valley, though inroads badly understates the case. Annexation would be more apt. The former black market leaders, the Knights of the Shield and, outside the city, the Zentarim, have largely been supplanted by Gortash's operation. 
Illegal arms have never been a major... What was that? Illegal arms have never been a major component of the guild's business, but given his apparent ambitions, it would be unwise to assume that Gortash will stop there. He bears watching closely. Borsar Uktar. Oh, I think it was a supply chest um, going away. Okay. Shop as ever. Man, I'm I'm really impressed with this with this spell. Very cool. Naturally, it takes away. It takes away your level 6 spell, but, but, I applaud your take. I could also just do something like, uh, give me a second, because I know I have, oh, by the way, this can all go into camp. Uh, this one, I can give this to her. What am I to do? Or, or is this limited to a, um, to a certain spell level? Ah, it's only up to level 3. Okay. The one that I'm thinking of is the one that Will is using. Right? This one? Yeah, spell slot restoration. It may honestly just be better on, on Shadow Heart. So I would always just cast the level 6 spell to stuff everyone. And then swap to the one she's using already, which is Misty Step. So something like I would do this, level 6. Done. Swap back over here. But the problem now is that I would have to find a necklace for Will. It shouldn't be much of a problem, but... But yeah, but now... I mean, wait. If I take away the memorization, will I lose the buff? Okay. It's still doable, but it has to be done in a different way. I would have to remove another spell to be able to do this. But I like all of my spells. I do like harm though. Or a planner ally. I guess I can take out Contagion because I'm never really using this. But if it lands, it's insane. Um, I'll take out Banish. And I'll try playing around maybe with a planner ally to see how he is. <clears throat> okay. So if that's the case, you keep the necklace. And which I necklace are you help. using? Which necklace are we giving Will? Animal friendship? No, thank you. Oh, brand the weak is not bad. Whenever you take fire damage, you gain heat, ice knife. I could go back to this one. Or this one. Okay, let's let's take this one for now. Hopefully I'll get a better uh, a better necklace at some the point. Pride of the gate. To silence. The following individuals are a threat to our operations and need to be silenced. Lilartharan of House Alibakar, okay, a bunch of people. Of the Cowled Wizards, are they still up? Well, this is in Arm, um, it's not here. Okay, I'm gonna take this list. Heavy chest. Fly. On the inevitability of moral decay and its benefits. Doesn't matter. And I'm off. Oh, this a, oh no, this is not a strong one. This is not a strong one. Where is the strong one? Oh, here. Ho oh ho. Ho ho. Boots of psionic movement. When a Githyanki casts Fly, their next melee weapon attack deals an additional 1d4 psychic damage. And this one grants Fly. 
How do you compare with the ones that Lazel is using? I don't remember her boots. Ah, armor class plus one and... Okay, no, no, no. It's not gonna happen, but she's gonna keep them. Where am I needed? Two steps at a time. I love surprises. Mahogany wardrobe. Hoon mausoleum key. Location of reserve supplies. For knights use only, not distribute. Buried behind counting house. Path to Baldur's Gate near upper city. I will try to remember that. Scroll. This document serves your official order from the Knights of the Shield to undertake a critical mission in Tathir. The success of this mission depends on your ability to execute your duties with utmost precision, discretion and loyalty to the Knights of the Shield. The primary objective is to gather intelligence on rumors of an uprising in the court of Queen Ringdown in Darumar, Tathir. The purpose of this intelligence will be the safeguarding of our trade relationships in the region. Note, meet with members of the Order of the Silver Chalice at your discretion, but beware that allegiances may not be as they appear. I don't think this matters, but I'll take it with me. Note about the Shield of Sylvan. Thanks to Gortash's steel watchers, it's becoming more and more difficult to have eyes on what's going on in the city. Hear me out. What if we make a play to reclaim the shield of Sylvan? If it can keep a beholder at bay, surely it can do something to get around those damned crying eyes. This could be of interest. No to all Knights of the Shield members. Please find within your latest intelligence on the city's lockdown an alternative smuggling route to the upper city. Take note and destroy after reading. The rest of the note appears to have been torn off. Investment opportunities. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. Other side. I don't even remember at this point what, um, what the Emperor told me. About his belongings. <laughs> I suck. An Archduke's leadership, public works. An Archduke's leadership, public works. A pamphlet by the Gortash for Archduke voluntary campaign. As Archduke, Lord, Gordash, Lord Gortash's top priority will be public works. To ensure the city's streets, sewers, docks, and most importantly, its walls and gates are properly maintained. No policy can be more important. Okay. So, I'm guessing there's something over here, right? I would assume. Hmm, something over there. What's that? Wait, everybody spotted something, but I didn't see what. I think it's on the other side. With the Githyanki Hunty Party Dispatch, we can explore the, the hideout further, perhaps even claiming some useful items. Okay, but what did he say? Uh... No, no, we've seen this. Ah, now search room, there's a statue that conceals the way through, I'll reveal it to you. You didn't reveal a goddamn thing. <laughs> There is a statue that reveals the way through. Ledger of Waterdeep Depths. Does this matter? No. Where is the statue? Maybe this display case in front of the statue? Jacinth. Okay. Okay, I feel like I'm missing something. There's another statue over here. But Perception was successful around this guy. Maybe it's the candles? Okay, nothing. Nothing. Okay, 
Let me let me click Let's here. See. What the hell, dude? Okay, so I think Gale and Will Let's found see, something. Me. Let me see if you can also find it and show me what it is. Got to keep moving. That's curious. Ah, now I can see it. Okay. Defender of the people. My own home. Thank you for bringing me back. Look around. You'll find some of my things still intact. Perhaps even useful to you. Okay. Sword of the Emperor. My own oh! Sword. My first purchase as an adventurer. No use to me anymore. It's yours, if you want it. There was a perception check. Difficulty class zero, and I rolled a one. <laughs> okay, can you guys see it? Reaction, not reaction. Or was the perception check just for the sword? I needed. Why did you equip it? Okay, let me do this. Sword of the Emperor. Shapeshifter Slayer. This weapon deals an additional 1d4 damage against shapeshifters or polymorph creatures. Magical durability. The wielder has a plus two bonus to saving throws against spells, and it's a plus two weapon. It is a good weapon. I think it's. I think this especially is quite good. This is very underwhelming, and this is good naturally. Okay, let's put it there. Don't think I will ever use it. Time. A I'm unique handy. shell. Hmm. What's that? That is a wardrobe. Okay, that's for Gale. Difficulty class zero again. My old wardrobe. Oh. The home of all my disguises. We are what we appear to be. And so appearances matter. I hope this is cool. It's heavy armor. You can't be frightened. Illiterate protection. If the wearer is infested by a Mind Flayer tadpole, they gain a plus one to intel intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Huh. Assume nothing. It's not bad. This would give me the same amount of AC, but mine reduces incoming damage by one, sends attackers reeling. And I cannot take critical hits. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't think I'm going to take this one. It is a cool, uh, a cool piece of armor, though. Cerebral Citadel Gloves. Illicit Euphoria. Charm or frighten the creature to gain a 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and saving throws. Eh? For how long? For a turn? While they are frightened? What's up? Nobody knows. It is normal... These are normal gloves. They are not medium armor. Okay, so... Am I needed? The person here that's kind of scaring people, uh, <coughs> frightening people is Lazel, but I like her, her gloves better. What about Gale? Gale? Gales are... Mm, depends, but overall better. Yeah, nobody's gonna be frightening except Lazel, so Where I can just forget I about this. Uh, okay. Best foot forward. Not a single item of use yet. Notes on Mind Flare Anatomy. I am interested in this one. First of all. A quick shake sends the smallest imperfect pearl rattling around with its hinged shell. Use. Use? Can't use. Dude. <laughs> okay. Insights gleaned from research. Mind flayers must consume the brains of humanoids in order to stay alive. It is said that the act of devouring a humanoid brain results in a state of euphoria and contributes to the thin glaze of mucus that coats a mind flayer's skin. 
Some researchers go so far as to claim that it is possible to deduce how recently another mind flare fed, and indeed the health of its victim from the viscosity of that mucus. Little is known about what a mind flare's brain contains. Some have argued their skulls are filled with eggs that will later become the tadpoles with which they enthrall their victims. Jesus. Others propose that the brain is in fact a cluster of pure cerebral nerves. Since mind flares procreate by tadpoling humanoids, they technically have no need of genitals, but I have been unable to verify this in the absence of any written record. Wait, how, how have you been unable to verify it if you yourself are a mind flayer? Don't you know if you have genitals? Strange. Whoops, not that. Synth cat. Synth cat. No, this one I want to say. Okay. A butter. Something over there. Why is the butter fork? My cutter is set. A gift from my mother. Okay. The butter knife is missing, but otherwise it looks to be complete. I don't need it anymore, but the memory stirs something in me still. And do I want to pick this up? Is it somehow special? Nope. It's just... Uh, okay. Stelmain's portrait. There she is, in all her glory. Dubelin Stelmain. My own partner. Yeah, she got killed here, right? That Shame. You have a look. The chains I use to find my meals. Villains and lawbreakers. You see, I tried to exercise morality where I could. Hmm. An empty that brain jar. An old container for brains. Empty. Shame. It would have been nice to find one to sustain me now. I have a few. Recipe for that fiddlehead soup. Click it. God damn it. A recipe for fiddlehead soup. A favorite meal of mine. When I had need of meals like that. Okay, so we're just learning about the guy? I can't even read it, okay. Another dog collar? What the hell is up with the dog collars? Rascal's collar. Ah. My poor four-legged friend. Their lives are so brief. So simple, and yet full. I could not agree more. Dogs are the best people in the world. Okay, uh, I think I have seen everything that was in here. Those Githyank, you were bitches. <laughs> Maybe something epic behind this door? No, another door. An empty backpack. Crates and sacks full of rotten food. Why did you go there, Will? Teach me your ways. Okay. Well, uh, I really, really want to go there, but we are basically right on time to end the episode. And if this triggers some kind of long sequence, I'm going to regret it. <laughs> so yeah, I am going to end the episode here, my friends. I think it's a, a good place to end it. We have cleared this entire area. We fought the Githyanki. We did some level ups, level 11, picked up some information on our Emperor friend. And we have a new area to explore in this hatch. Hopefully a cool area. For now, this will be it. As always, I want to thank you all for being here with me in the channel, watching some Baldur's Gate 3. If you have any questions, suggestions, anything at all, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. There are more videos coming out very soon. And I, also, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Until then, 
Stay safe, everyone.